Hey everybody, welcome back to a very special deep dive for Marvel's Midnight Suns. In partnership with Marvel and 2K, we've showcased seven heroes on the roster so far. And our eighth is arguably, not even arguably, they're the most important of them all. I've seen a lot of great debate as to the order of the superheroes that we'll be covering. And to be honest, I don't think I've seen a correct guess yet, but keep them coming. It's fun for me and hopefully fun for you. Today, we discuss the first ever fully customizable superhero in a Marvel game. The child of Lilith, the mother of demons, and the protagonist of the story in Marvel's Midnight Suns. Today's deep dive is all about the hunter. Mother. So, that's a good thing, right? What makes the Hunter unique compared to other characters on the roster is that they have three distinct ability branches. You got a power branch, a light branch, or a dark branch. Whether you want to be a potent damage dealer, a supportive healer, or something in between, the choice is up to you. In total, there are 30 different Hunter cards, 10 from each branch, and each branch also has an associated legendary ability that we're going to touch on later. I'll also share a bit about how to unlock these, as I don't think we've talked about that very often in previous videos, and I've had some questions, so hopefully you will have some answers. Just like old times. Now let's start with our Hunter's Power Branch of Abilities. You're going to notice a good mix of buffs, debuffs, and of course some damage. First up, we've got Wrath. Now if you see my video titled, Everything You Need to Know About Marvel's Midnight Suns, you may remember that cards have a chance to gain critical damage based on the stats of the individual superhero. Now, Wrath will give all Hunter cards in your hand critical and guarantees all Hunter cards drawn for the next two turns afterwards are also critical. On upgrade, Wrath becomes free but stops generating heroism, and one of the late game mods could even grant a card draw. Now, I want to show you the next card for a couple of reasons. First, its upgrade applies two very powerful debuffs and does a lot of damage. And second, it introduces a new mechanic that we haven't talked about yet. When you're casting Fury at base level, you're going to apply one vulnerable and do a very nice chunk of damage. That's cool, we've seen this before. But when you play this is very important, since the new mechanic called Final will ensure that the Hunter cannot act afterwards. On upgrade, you'll apply two marked in addition to vulnerable, and a late game mod could see you being able to generate heroism on redrawing it. A heroic card aptly named Patience is up next, and it's also got a unique approach to it. Its effect is pretty straightforward, lots of damage, but six heroism to cast it can be quite a lot. Fret not if you can't afford it, just hold it in your hand for longer, just like investing, but with heroism and time instead of money. For each turn in your hand, the heroism required to play Patience will drop by one. Then boom, something is getting destroyed for cheap. If you upgrade it, it gets a 25% damage increase, and a late game mod could grant card draw on knockouts. Patience would also make a pretty nice pairing with Wrath that we talked about earlier. Hmm, weird. Now, best used on a busy battlefield, the Hunter's Power Legendary card is called Bladestorm. Little XCOM throwback, perhaps. It's also their Midnight Suns ability card, and is unlocked the same as other heroes. So the way you go about that is you would build the Forge's Armory upgrade, and then you complete the Hunter's Midnight Suns challenge mission. For four heroism, you'll get an AoE ability, dealing damage and applying a forceful knockback to each enemy in the AoE. On upgrade, you'll draw a card for each knockout. This could be a really solid opener in the right situation. You know what would be really cool, actually? If there was a hero on the roster that could, like, maybe gather enemies together in some way, and then this could be a nice follow-up for that. Something to think about. Now, for reasons that will become extremely clear in a minute, I think the Light Path is going to be a fan favorite. It specs the Hunter into more of a support hero with heroism generation, heals, cures, and buffs. That said, a Light Hunter is still a very capable damage dealer. For this branch, I want to start with its legendary ability. And these are unlocked by progressing the Hunter's balance in either direction. The way that you do that is through story decisions and mainly dialogue, but also by playing more cards of the Light and Dark branches. The Light legendary ability is called Summon Charlie. And I bet you can guess what that does, sort of. <laughs> Upon casting it, you're going to summon Charlie, our beloved pet dog, 
for two turns and immediately draw two Charlie cards. Upgrading will bring Charlie around for an additional turn, but keep in mind this card does have exhaust. Now, as it's just a little tease here, one of Charlie's cards is called Howl. Charlie's going to target a large AoE and apply Marked on all enemies in the circle. We'll show another one too. It's called Bite that damages and causes knockback. At the end of the day, Charlie's the best. She must be protected at all costs. Do not screw that up. Do not let Charlie go down. Because if you do, you don't want to know. Now, what about some of those heals that we mentioned before? Holy Burst is one heck of a heal, but that's not all it does. Perhaps taking a page out of Scarlet Witch's book, Holy Burst will see the hunter targeting an area and everyone in it. Everyone. Not just enemies. And everyone's going to be affected in some way. If they are an enemy, they're going to take a solid chunk of damage. Are they an ally, though? We're going to heal them up. The upgrade is fantastic, too. It increases the healing by 50% and increases the area of effect to make targeting a little bit easier. Lastly, a card that could probably use its own video for the combo potential it unlocks. Arguably one of the strongest cards in the entire game if set up correctly. May I present to you Holy Gift. And what a gift it is, at base level, Holy Gift ensures the next Hunter card played is not discarded. That includes cards with exhaust. So for example, if you played Summon Charlie after Holy Gift, you'd retain the Summon Charlie card to play it again after Charlie expires. On upgrade, this is where it gets insane. After upgrading Holy Gift, the next hero card played is not discarded. That's right, hero card, not hunter card. So think about all the cards that we've talked about in these showcases so far. I could throw a bunch of examples at you, but I would be very curious to hear some theory crafting from you guys in the comments about which cards would combo with this one so far that we've covered. Regardless, in my opinion, this is a must-have card in any Hunter deck. Light, dark, or somewhere in between. Now, we're going to move over to my personal favorite Hunter branch. Welcome to the dark side of the Hunter. The dark branch makes the Hunter a powerful damage dealer, but at the cost of some negative effects. It can also allow for enemy control and manipulation. The first two cards that we're going to showcase are called Mind Bender and Mind Breaker. Both cards turn enemies on each other, but how they go about it is quite a bit different. Mind Bender is a skill card and is the more predictable of the two. Upon being targeted, the enemy will attack their nearest ally and the card will be exhausted. If you upgrade it, they'll attack their nearest ally twice. Great stuff. Easy to understand. Mind Breaker, on the other hand, is a heroic card that applies Berserk. This is also a new mechanic. Berserk makes the target attack nearby units as their next action. At base level, Mind Breaker applies two instances of Berserk, and the upgraded version would apply three, but the heroism cost will go up slightly. So, you can use this to have the enemy attack other Hydra units, or it can act as a pseudo taunt, depending on the positioning on the battlefield, because they're attacking nearby units. Anything, not just allies. Regardless, the card is crazy powerful, and it doesn't have exhaust. Lastly, we have the Dark Branch legendary heroic ability called Annihilation, and Annihilate it will. This card scales with the amount of heroism you have, but once played, is exhausted, consumes all heroism, and damages each enemy in an area, so more heroism equals more damage. More heroism? Yeah, you got it. More damage. On upgrade, the amount of damage per heroism goes up by 50%. And it's wild. It is very, very powerful. There are more dark cards that I'd love to cover, but we're running low on time here. And you can see, like, we could talk the Hunter for a very long time. There's actually a couple of other Hunter things that I'd love to get into. We're going to have to save that for another video. We need to talk about collars that the Hunter can unlock, which are going to grant the Hunter special meters to fill, like Captain Marvel. We also need to talk about the passives that the Hunter can unlock, along with their tactical suits. We also have to talk about how even if you've dedicated your Hunter fully to one branch, there's still ways to earn the legendary abilities from the other branches. The Hunter is easily the most complex hero on the roster because you have so many possibilities and combinations of cards to play with. 
How are you going to build your hunter? Are you the good guy who wants to support the squad, let them handle the dirty work? Or are you the baddie who wants to be responsible for the demise of as many Hydra as possible? I know where I lean. Curious to hear your thoughts. Either way, in addition to your cosmetic choices, it's easy to say that everyone's hunter is going to look and play a little bit differently. Thanks again to Marvel and 2K for working with me on this series. We're going to see you guys again in a little while to cover the rest of the roster. Thanks for continuing to watch these videos, keeping the hype train going. It's going to take a little bit longer than originally planned to reach that final destination, but we're going to keep the ride as exciting as possible when we do reach that final destination. I promise the wait will be worth it. See you all next time. Yeah!